So if you clicked on this video, it is most likely one of two things. Either you have seen one of my previous videos that I've used my hair dryer in and you want to learn more, or you have tried it and you might be struggling a little bit with it. It's not the easiest thing to work with, but it is a lot of fun. So I figured I would put together my top five tips and tricks to using the hair dryer when painting. And this is for you to answer some of the questions that I get most commonly and some of the, share some of the things that I have learned throughout the paintings that I've done. Before I get into the tips and tricks, I have to give a big shout out to Paul Stardart channel. So Paul is the first person I saw use the hairdryer to really manipulate the paint, not just take some fluid, um, high flow fluid paint and move it around. He really was using it methodically to try to move paint around and he inspired me and I went out and got my own hairdryer and I started playing with it myself. So he has some different techniques than I have. He is a little bit more patient, I would say, and uh, I think he uses a little bit different techniques when he's using the hair dryer. So I encourage you guys to check out his channel and see the differences between the two of us. See if maybe he does something that you really want to try out. It's just another source and more information for you guys to try out. So to get into the tips, my first number one tip is, I know it sounds crazy, but thin your paint. Now, I know when we're using, doing um, flip cups and dirty pours, we wanna keep the paint a little thicker, we're looking for cells, we're looking for reactions. I still get cells and reactions when I thin my paint down when I'm using the hair dryer, just not a ton of them. And I'm not looking for that when I'm using the hair dryer, I'm just looking for a different effect. So don't be afraid and go ahead and thin your paint down a little bit, a little bit more than normal. Um, I can't give you an exact formula. The reason being is that all of these paints come with their, their different consistencies. So I will say that oftentimes when I'm thinning down the Liquitex Basics or the Artist Loft, um, I tend to go like 50% paint, 50-60% paint, 20, let's do 60%, that's probably more accurate, 20% Floetrol and 20% water. Um, with these paints though, they're a lot thinner, so there's not too much that I need to do to them. But sometimes within the same brand, the pigments can be thicker or thinner. So really hard to give you guys an exact formula as to how I thin my paint. It's really just a judgment call. But I'm gonna bring you in to show you these consistencies and um, what I do to get them to the consistency that I want them to be at. So let's go look at that. All right, so I've got these colors right here. These are the neon colors, the deco art neon colors. I wanted to play with these. Um, and when I opened them up, I saw that they are pretty darn thin. So when I pour this in, let's see, whoo, see how it comes real fast? And it is already real thin. Look at that stream. Um, so I don't think I'm going to add anything to that. That's actually the consistency I'm looking for. So let's look at this one. This is, oh wait, this one was the thermal green. These are the deco art neons, like I said. This is the sizzling pink. And whoop, that one again, that one's nice and thin. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that. And I'm not going to add any water to it. For this one is electric blue. Pretty certain this again is the same consistency. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, might need a little dab of water, but actually it's looking pretty good. I'll probably leave it alone too. Then we get into this pink right here. And this pink is the pink explosion. And this one, see, it's not coming. There we go, and it's glugging out. Do you see that? So it is much thicker than the other paints. So this is why it makes it really hard to give you guys a formula as to how to thin your paints because you never know. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. Just a couple drips. Oh, there we go. 
and let's stir it up and see where we get it. Whenever I stir, I guess I'm crazy, but I, I will always want to sing, stir it up. Oh no, there's my horrible singing voice. Woo, darling, stir it up. All right, all right, there we go. See, just a few drops of water, and I'm definitely getting the consistency that I'm looking for. Hard to show, hard to show you guys because there's not much paint to give you that steady stream, but there you go, there we go, I got it. All right, so now that one's ready to go. And just to reiterate, here's the black that I'm using, and that's the consistency I'm looking for right there. All right, so time for tip number two. Tip number two is to flood your canvas. Now, what I mean by flooding your canvas is making, I've got a whole tub of black for the painting I'm about to do, um, that is a thin black, and it, uh, it, I'm gonna pour it over the whole canvas so that the paint that I'm trying to move on top of it has something to glide against. So I'm gonna pour it all throughout, I'm gonna move it all around so there's a nice thin layer all all the way through my whole canvas and I'm going to plop down little blobs of paint however I want to do that and then I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer. It just helps it flow and move and glide across the other paint. It's going to be a big saver for you because when you try to put a puddle here on a dry canvas and move it around it's going to get stuck real quick and then you're just drying out your paint. So definitely flood your canvas first. Alright so then that leads me to tip number three. These are really fast paintings. You have to do them very quickly. You have to think about how you want to lay out your paint and what kind of effects you're looking for when you get started because you cannot hit it over and over and over again with the hair dryer. It's going to dry it out. It's going to seize it up. It's not going to work. So what I tend to do, and I try to keep this in my head, I don't usually, sometimes I break my own rule, but I try to do two to three swipes and then move on. So if I've got paint all over this canvas, and I've got some puddles around. I'm gonna hit this puddle and move it around two or three times, sometimes four, <laughs> and then I'm gonna move on to another area. I'm gonna let that settle and think about it for a second before I decide if there's another spot that I wanna blow out. So just keep moving around two to three swipes. Think about it, think about whether it's worth going in and risking the fact that you might get it seized up. Um, and just be very quick with it. Most of these paintings only take me about five minutes because you just don't have that much time to move the paint around before it dries out. So two to three swipes and then move on. My tip number four, and this is a common question that I get around what speed is my hair dryer on and what is the temperature on my hair dryer. So this hair dryer is the Revlon Ionic. It's 1875 watts. Um, I have this hair dryer for a personal hair dryer, not this particular one. Um, it's a nice, powerful hair dryer. There are some on the market that are a lot, um, they don't blow very hard. So I knew this hair dryer was good and I knew it came with a nozzle. So I went and bought a new one because I had already thrown away this nozzle. Never thought I would have a use for it. Turns out I do. Um, so I always use this one. This one has low, medium, and high, and I always set it to high. I've tried to move paint around on low and medium, and it just doesn't get the movement that I'm looking for, and it starts drying out before I can get the paint where I want it to be. Also, there's a button right here. That's the cooling button. And so it just turns off the heating element and just blows the air temperature, room temperature air. Um, I've tried this with the, the button down, the cooling down, and I've tried it without it, with the full heat on. I will tell you, I've no, I don't notice a difference between the two of them. I've tried it a few times and it's not like it helps it not seize up any faster. Um, I just haven't seen any benefits to using just the cool air. So I stopped trying because it's another button I need to hold and another thing I need to think about when I'm trying to get this painting done that I really want to get done and I have limited time. So I say forget the cool, go with the heat, just move on quickly. Okay, that leads me to my final tip, 
Tip number five, play with your angles. So a couple things about angles. You've seen one of my paintings out there, one of my videos, it's like black, gold, ochre, white, and red, a um, couple reds. I did strips of paint on there, moved them around a little bit, and then I used the hairdryer to blend the lines. And I really just took it and went like this and this and this to uh, blend the lines between them, make some cool effects, but not to truly blend the colors together. So that's one way of doing it. Then there's also like the 45 degree angle. And sometimes I do this and sometimes I do this, depending on where my cord's at and what I just feel like doing with my wrist. Um, one other thing I want to mention though, is if you had three puddles of paint right here, say white, blue, and red, because you know, 4th of July wasn't too long ago. If you were to hit that white and sh like this, you would shoot that white across over top of the blue and the red. So if you really want to blend them out separately, you'd start with that red, move that one out, then go to the blue, move that one into the red, and then the white, move that into the blue, and then the red, and blend from there. But if you're taking paint from here, whatever you're going over this direction, it's going to jump that paint. So be careful, it may be the blending technique that you want, and that may be ideal for you, but if you're not looking for it, it can really put a damper in exactly what you were trying to do and the outcome you were looking for. Okay, so one last little bonus tip here is watch out for your tip. So as you can see, my tip has built up paint all around it. That is because I will get into moving and grooving with the paint and the hair dryer, and all of a sudden I'll hit the canvas and I grab a bunch of that paint off. Oh, it always drives me a little crazy when I do that. And I'm always trying to wipe it off, but I, sometimes I don't even realize that I did it. And if I can push the paint back over it, it's not a big deal. But I have a buildup of paint here. Just be careful about that tip. Make sure that you're staying above your canvas and not driving into your canvas. Although, I found it hard to do that. Alright guys, so those are my top five tips. Let's recap real quick. A is thin your paint, probably about 20%. Two is flood your canvas. Three is two to three strokes and then move on. Four is high, uh, have your high dryer on high and heat. And five is play with your angles. Okay, so I'm trying this as a new uh, possible format where I do one kind of tips and tricks or just talking to you type of video a week and then one video a week that is actually painting. Tell me what you think about this by commenting below. If I haven't addressed some of your questions, go ahead and throw those down there again. I may do another follow-up video in the future. Um, if you like this video and you find, found it to be helpful, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Um, and for the idea of doing the two different videos um, a week and doing one where I'm talking to you guys a little bit more, Give me some feedback on that by commenting below. Do you want more of that? Or would you rather me just shut up and paint? <laughs> All right, guys. That's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, take care.